Greetings Commanders, Stealth Boy here. Are you ready to take the next step and obtain the tools that will unlock your full potential? Will you join me and become the silent, undetectable hunter of the night? Today, you will learn how to access the Engineers of Odyssey and upgrade your gear with all the essential modifications that will prepare you to becoming a Master Stealth Assassin. Welcome to the Stealth Engineer's Guide. As always, if you like my guides and want to see more, please do like, subscribe and click the bell notification to get updates when I release more videos. In many of my future guides, I will often use some advanced modifications and this guide will help you obtain all of these so you can use them yourself. This is what you'll learn in today's guide. You will learn about the five modifications that I recommend, extra backpack capacity, noise suppressor, night vision, audio masking and quieter footsteps. You will meet the engineers you will need to unlock and you will learn efficient ways to gain access to them all. And I'll tell you the best places to get the required materials to unlock them. There are lots of useful mods in Odyssey that will help you in combat and provide various other utility benefits. But these are the five mods I recommend as excellent benefits for stealth. The first modification I think anyone should get is extra backpack capacity. This won't help you with stealth strictly, but I think this is an essential mod. The earlier you get this, the better. This mod doubles the carrying capacity of your suit for data goods and assets. You'll be doing a lot of gathering of materials as you go, and this mod lets you stay out in the field for longer without needing to go back to your SRV or ship to drop your stuff off. I fully recommend adding this mod to the Maverick suit and you can see here that the benefits are huge. The next mod you should get is Noise Suppressor. This beauty significantly reduces the sound your weapon makes when you fire it in a pressurized environment. This is essentially when you fire it indoors, when the atmospheric systems are powered on. This allows you to kill targets inside without alerting other NPCs. You do need to be aware that the impact sound the weapon makes isn't neutralized. If you shoot a wall nearby to an NPC, or of course if you use the L6 rocket launcher, the impact sound will be just as loud and you will still alert NPCs in range. So long as you hit your target and no one sees it, this mod will let you silently kill indoors with little effort. Just bear in mind that if the target does respond and shoot back, their weapon will still make a sound. So you'll need to eliminate your opponent quickly. For this, I recommend using this mod in an Executioner, Intimidator or Tormentor. Next up is Night Vision. This mod is a game changer and I recommend you unlock this as soon as you can. It is effective in complete darkness and will allow you to see with total clarity. Your enemies will have reduced vision, meaning you can move about more freely and you'll never get caught off guard by them. It even works well in daylight as it will cancel out the low gamma effect that the game can have with shadows. Which suit you use this mod on is up to you. I have applied it twice, once to my Maverick suit and also to my main Dominator suit for combat. Audio masking is the next mod you'll need. This mod complements noise suppressor and does the same thing, but for when you fire your weapons outside or where the atmospheric systems are turned off in a building. Audio in Elite Dangerous Odyssey is conveyed through a vacuum to our suits via a computer simulation, so we can hear things going on around us. Audio masking simply deactivates this process, making your shots in the vacuum as silent as they actually are. This mod will allow you to use the skills from my stealth combat guide even more effectively as your shots outside won't alert anyone at all. Finally, for the stealth aficionados, I recommend getting quieter footsteps. This mod will reduce the sound your footsteps make by 50%. It won't help you if you crouch, as this method of movement is already 100% silent and is the default method I recommend if you're trying to remain undetected. But this mod allows you to run at normal speed and so long as you don't get any closer than this on the radar, and you don't get seen of course, then you can remain undetected. Sprinting is quieter as well, although you will get heard at the same distance as running without the mod, so use this sparingly. This mod is very useful on heists and other missions where you need to move through restricted areas a lot. It allows you to do this without crouching, getting in and out much faster. 
In order to obtain all of these mods, you will need to unlock six of the nine engineers in Odyssey. The remaining three do provide some great mods, but we won't cover these in this guide. This is the sequence I recommend you employ when unlocking these engineers. One, Domino Green. Two, Jude Navarro. Three, Terra Velasquez. Four, Odin Geiger. Five, Kit Fowler. And six, Yarden Bond. The reason for this order is twofold. Firstly, the mods you get from these are prioritized by the ones I think are most useful. Secondly, unlocking Kit Fowler can take a long time as he requires 20 opinion polls. It's possible to find opinion polls as you go whilst doing other activities. So I recommend leaving Kit Fowler until later on. Before I cover each engineer in turn, I'll take a quick moment to show you the list of all the items you'll need to unlock the engineers. This list is just the materials you'll need to loot for unlocking engineers. The reason I'm showing this list is it's a useful cheat sheet. If you see these items on your travels, grab them. This list is also shown in the description below for quick reference. We'll now go through each of these engineers, how to unlock each, and how to get referred to the next engineer in the sequence. Domino Green is the first engineer you should unlock because she lets you upgrade your suit to increase your carrying capacity. This will help you indefinitely when unlocking other engineers and upgrading weapons. Domino is a tier one engineer, and so you will know about her due to public knowledge. This just means you don't need to be referred to Domino. As you see here, her unlock requirements are to travel 100 light years in an Apex shuttle. This is a trivial requirement and I won't go into detail about how you need to do this. Just book a long range journey at an Apex interstellar shop and pick any destination that's greater than 100 light years away and sit back whilst the journey plays out. A quick tip that's relevant now, but useful for unlocking any engineer is that the game doesn't necessarily acknowledge the things you do towards unlocking until you either get into your ship, log out of the game entirely, or usually both. So every time you hit a target for unlocking or referring, get into your ship, log out of the game, and then log back in. This should trigger the next event in the process. From now on, I'll assume you know to do this after every stage in this guide. Once unlocked, you can find where Domino is by visiting her page in the Engineers menu and visiting the galaxy map here. You can set a course and then travel there in your ship. If you've never visited the destination system, you may need to visit the nav beacon, scan it, and then check the system map like this. Remember, if you do this, to save your data by selling it the next time you dock at any station more than 20 light years away from here. Upon arrival, you will now be able to find Domino in her shop and access her modifications. This is the blueprint for the extra backpack capacity mod. We will need to get a referral from Domino, so you will want to obtain five items of push. This is an illegal drug in the game and it can be found in quite a few locations. The easiest to find are the secured lockers inside any HAB building of any settlement. You can also find it in some secured research lockers often found in res buildings in high tech settlements. Finally, another good way to get pushes via the containers in the points of interest called irregular markers, where there is a threat level as shown here. The latter will often require some combat and can often be challenging and they're not too easy to find. So I'd not recommend this for new players, but if you do want to find them, you'll need to equip a surface scanner to your ship, fully map the surface and then hope you see an irregular marker with threat level. This is relatively random, but I found a lot of hits in Anarchy systems. A good system I recommend trying first is Alici. You can fulfill this step of the process at your own pace. We do not need to do it immediately as we won't be unlocking Kit Fowler just yet. Just make sure you grab five push and keep them stored away. Any more than five and you can just sell them in any Anarchy Stations bar for extra credits. Next up, we want to unlock Jude Navarro. Jude doesn't offer any mods for stealth, but he does have some very useful mods, including magazine size, which I use quite a lot. The main reason we're unlocking him is because he will refer us to Terra Velasquez, who we absolutely do want to get access to. 
Jude requires that you complete 10 restore or reactivation missions. These can be tricky to find these days due to a recent change to the BGS. The best way to find these missions is this. Use Inara to search for a faction near to your current location and filter for factions in a state of infrastructure failure. I'd also suggest sorting the list by influence as the higher the influence, the more settlements the faction is likely to own. You want a system that has settlements and a place to get a mission from. Go to the system and check the mission board and you should see a couple of missions to that faction settlement here. You should be able to repeat these same missions over each time until you've done the 10 required to unlock Jude. Jude will send you a message when you're done and you can then go visit him in his base. Next on the list is Terra Velasquez. We'll need Jude Navarro to refer us to her before we start to unlock her. Remember that any unlock process is only counted once you've been referred. Jude requires five genetic repair meds to refer us to Terra. These can be obtained as an uncommon item in these large industrial or extraction lockers found in processing rooms or proc rooms. This is the best location and this is the locker in question. These rooms can be found in certain IND or EXT buildings in industrial or extraction settlements. Take these to Jude. You'll need to use your keyboard to give these items to him. Mouse doesn't work. Once you've given him all five, you will be able to see Terra in the engineer menu. And so you can begin to unlock her. My guide, Mastering Heists and Unlocking Terra Velasquez gives you the full rundown of how to do this. At the time this guide is published, there is a known issue with this process, and it's theorized that covert thefts don't always count towards this. It's been confirmed that you only need six of either covert thefts or covert heists, but the bug with this process is making it very difficult to work out how you're going towards that target. My advice is to just keep doing either of the two types until you get the invitation. Now that we have unlocked Terra, we can upgrade our weapons with Noise Suppressor. I suggest you do this as soon as you can with at least one weapon. The next engineer is Odin Geiger and Terra will refer us to him once we've provided her with 15 financial projections. This data can be found at any habitat data port. These can be found in a variety of locations including hab buildings, storage buildings and more. This is how you identify one. I recommend you check these out every time you pass them. They contain a lot of the data we need for unlocking engineers. Once you've given the 15 financial projections to Terra, you will be able to see Odin in the engineer menu here. On to the next step, how to unlock Odin Geiger. You can see that he requires us to sell a total of 20 biological sample, employee genetic data or genetic research. A quick tip for this stage, the easiest one to find is genetic research. These are commonly available as a mission reward for completing missions. I strongly recommend you use this method to get the 20 you need. You can also find genetic research at research data points located in res buildings, commonly seen in lab or med bay rooms. The best place to find these are at high tech settlements. Don't sell any of them until you've been referred to Odin. When you're ready, you can sell these at any bartender. This will trigger the unlock for Odin and he'll send you an invitation message. Odin provides one of the best modifications in the game, night vision. I strongly recommend getting this as soon as you can. This will make all missions and combat scenarios easier for you and a lot of my future guides will demonstrate this mod in use. Kit Fowler is next. He does have a couple of useful mods but we mainly want him so he can refer us to Yard and Bond. Remember that I said you'll need five doses of push and give these to Domino Green? She will refer you to Kit. Kit needs you to sell 20 opinion polls to bartenders to unlock his services. Hopefully you'll already have a few of these by now if you've been raiding habitat data ports in your travels. Every time you see one, download it. A lot of commanders recommend going to tourist settlements where two variants of this settlement type can have six to seven habitat data ports. This is definitely a fast way to grind opinion polls and other data types you need for engineers. But do bear in mind that this isn't the only way to get them. 
I spent a lot of time infiltrating large extraction bases, industrial bases and high tech bases to gather other materials, also checking all data ports when doing missions. And I got most of my 20 opinion polls that way. My advice is mix it up. Don't burn yourself out grinding one location. Once you've sold 20 opinion polls to a bartender, Kit will send you the invitation message. He will want five units of surveillance equipment in order to refer us to Yard and Bond. These are commonly found in secure security lockers in security rooms, often found in command centers. You can find them in some secure lockers in HAP buildings as well. They're very common, so it shouldn't take too long to get five. Give these to Kit and he'll refer you to Yard and Bond. This is our final engineer. Yarden requires that you sell eight smear campaign plans to bartenders in order to unlock her services. I recommend you visit Gatak's piece in the LHS 1541 system as shown here. This settlement is currently owned by an anarchy faction and so you can take the data without raising the alarm. It's illegal to download smear campaign plans normally and if anything else gets in your way you can just kill them without any penalty. There are other places you can visit and bear in mind that the state of locations can change so this location may not always be the best however it has seven habitat data ports. This is the best order to do them in. Visit the bar at the end of the settlement first as there's no authorization needed for this one. Then clone the ID of anyone with access level of 1 at least, although I recommend level 2 for the final building. Then visit each of the four HAB buildings nearby. Each one has a data port in the same location. Some of these are occupied and they're all restricted. By all means, you can use stealth to avoid the occupants most of the time, but I just shoot them if it's an anarchy settlement. There's no punishment for this. Finally, there are two more data ports located in the security level 2 building near to the landing pad as shown here. I got eight smear campaign plans in just two runs of this location. If you do want to reset it, remember to launch in your ship, jump to super cruise, and then immediately drop and land again to reset the data ports. Once you've sold eight smear campaign plans, Yarden will send you an invitation message and we're good to go visit her. She gives us access to audio masking and quieter footstep mods. These are the required materials for these mods. That concludes the Stealth Engineer's Guide. A quick note before I sign off, I'd like to say a massive thanks to Elite Week, who have recommended my channel a number of times in the last few weeks. I truly appreciate all the kind words they've had to say about my guides. If you'd like to check them out, the link to their channel is in the description below. Just so you know, they've undergone a rebranding this week and are now named Black Sky Legion. Thanks guys, and thanks to you all for watching. Stay stealthy, Commanders.